Greetings and welcome to a new video about electric circuits. We'll continue with our series and this is our example about Norton's theorem. And this will be our first example. The example is similar actually to the Thevenin's theorem, where we have discussed in the previous videos. Norton's theorem is actually like Thevenin's theorem, a theorem that provides a method of reducing a more complex circuit to a simpler equivalent form. So you reduce a relatively complex circuit to a, let's say this one, to a relatively easy equivalent circuit. And that will give you more freedom and also more power in analyzing how much current voltage is at your load, for example. Of course, we will look at the calculation step by step for this example also and then verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at our example. We have this electric circuit given here, an exact the same circuit actually for the Thevenin theorem for first example, with a voltage source Vs of 10 volts, DC voltage source, and we have R1, R2, and R3. The values are given here and also shown in the circuit. And we have a load of 50 ohms here connected between node X and Y. Now using Norton's theorem, we would like to calculate the current and also the voltage for the load resistor. So this actually the same question is in the Thevenin's theorem example, but now using the Norton's theorem. So what are the differences now? We have again defined our current log, uh, direction and also the voltage is shown here, the VL and IL for the current. Okay, let's look at the solutions. Step one is remove the load, again as we did for the Thevenin's theorem, and in this case we short the output. So that means actually the following, the circuit then becomes like that. So you remove your load, and make a short between the node X and Y where you actually consider your, uh, your output. And then you calculate actually here in step two, determine the Norton current. So we did actually Thevenin voltage, now we do actually the current. And this current is flowing in this direction from point X to point Y. And that current is called IN, Norton current. Now, we can do that in a sim in a different ways. What you can do in, my, in this case, I have chosen to combine R2 and R3 first in order to have a series combination of Vs, R1 and a new resistor, which I call this point P first and then take them together and call this RP. So RP is then a parallel combination of R2 and R3 that can be also written in this formula form and that will be then 60 times 20 over 60 plus 20 the values are given here that will result exactly in 15 ohms so 15 ohms is this and then your circuit becomes this relatively simple the point p is already there and vp is there and this voltage here is then the so we have rp and there will be some voltage there between point p and ground we call this vp if I know this voltage VP, I also know the voltage across R2 and also across R3. And when once I know the voltage across R3, I also know the current through it using Ohm's law. And then I also know the IM because of the same current for R3 because that is just a series combination for this branch. So I can say using voltage divider rule, I can say let's then calculate VP by doing in this circuit RP over R1 plus RP times Vs. So you substitute the values, you have 15 for the RP, 40 for R1, and 15 for RP again, and 10 for Vs. And if you work it out, you will get approximately 2.73 volts. This is the voltage between point P and ground. That same voltage is for R2 and also for R3. So we can say parallel circuit for this part, so V3, that's the voltage across the R3 from this point P to ground, is also VP, which is then 2.73 volts. Then we get, using Ohm's law actually, that IN, this current, is equal to the VP over R3 or V3 over R3. So we can say this 2.73 over 20, and you will get this current, which is then 136.4 milliamps. Now we have determined our Norton current. The, the third step is actually determine the Norton resistance. And that is actually exact same as the Thevenin resistance. So what you then do is you, in this case, for this circuit, you short actually your voltage source. If you have, of course, a current source or in a voltage or in a current source, that can be, of course, also the case. 
For voltage sources, you will short it, independent voltage sources. And for a current source, you will open that. So now we have a short here. And you look actually between point X and Y again, that is your RN, which is then your Northern resistance. Now what you have is then the following. You combine now again also R1 and R2, because you can say, okay, that RM, let's say the parallel combination, is then R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now 40 times 60 over 40 plus 60, then that will give us 24 ohms exactly. Now I have actually this circuit. And I have a R1 and R2 in parallel, which is RM. That one is series with R3, so we will get this equation for the Rn. And that will be then 24 plus 20, it will get me 44 ohms for my Norton resistance. Okay, now, now we can form our Norton equivalent circuit using the In, Norton current, and Rn, Norton resistance. And that is now this equi uh, equivalent circuit. This is the equivalent circuit for Norton's theorem, which recognizes the current source, In, is in parallel with the Rn. In a Tefanin case, it was the Tefanin voltage here in series with the Tefanin resistance. So we can actually go from one equivalent circuit to the other. That is possible. And that is just a way to also convert your Norton equivalent circuit to Tefanin or the other way around. Okay, now we have these results. That means the In is 136.4 milliamps and the Rn is 44 ohms. Now we can go to step 5 and then connect the load resistance we already have from the beginning to this circuit. And this circuit is, I think, much much easier than the original circuit given in this example. That means actually the following of In and Rn and then connect between node X and Y your RL. Now we can calculate the required IL and VL from the original circuit. That is exact same. So this VL and IL is exact same as this VL and IL. Now using now, in this case, the current divider rule, because we pump in current here and that will split in this branch of RN and RL, we can say this current is the other resistor divided by the sum of these two resistors times IN. That's the current divider rule. We know the values, so we can just substitute IL is equal to 44 over 94 times this 136.4 milliamps, of course, given in amps. If you work it out, you will get 63.8 milliamps, and this was also exact the same result from the example using Tefnus theorem. Now, using Ohm's law, we can now have the following. We can say V is equal to I times R. So we can say VL is equal to IL times RL. I know the load current, I also know the load resistance, so that will give me 3.19 volts, also exact same as we had in the example using Tevenin's theorem. Okay, now let's also look now at the summary of the results. These are the results for the Norton current and Norton resistance, and this was for the load voltage and load current. We can also simulate the, uh, the circuit. This is the original circuit. We can simulate this without any actually equivalent circuit using the Norton's theorem. And you will can generate a table and you can see actually for this circuit here, actually for this component RL, it's actually shown here. This is the current actually will show you 63.8 milliamps. We have 63.8 milliamps, just, just, just actually small difference due to rounding of arrows. And you also see actually here for the voltage, again, V underscore RL, 3.19 approximately and this is also what we have here so that is very close to what we have calculated now we can now use that equivalent circuit having of course used that northern equivalent circuit this is the current source in parallel that resistor the northern resistance of 44 ohms so 44 ohms here 136.4 milliamps here and again connecting the load, exact same load between node X and Y. What you see is, if I now simulate this circuit also, you can see I underscore RL is 63.85 approximately, so very close to actually what we have seen also in the original circuit. That's actually shown here. So the small difference is again due to rounding of arrows, and we also see the V 
underscore RL is 3.19, close to that value volts. So also very close to what, what the original circuit says in the simulator and also what we have calculated. So this shows actually that the circuit is, this circuit, what we have actually here as, as an equivalent circuit, is exact same, give you exact same result as the original circuit. Let's now also generate these uh, results in the simulator using SPICE and show you there how we can, uh, let's say, produce these tables. So let's now jump to the SPICE. Now, this is the circuit I have already prepared for you, so I can a little bit zoom in and to see actually the circuit more easily. So this is the original circuit. You can see the voltage source and the resistors and the load. And this is the Norton equivalent circuit with the load resistor RL connected. Now, if I now do analysis, and DC analysis and then show the table of results, for example, that will give me a lot of information because we have two circuits next to each other or on top of each other. And if I click on this with my pen, I can see directly the values. You can see 63.8 milliamps and also the 3.19 volts. If I click on this one, it's exact same, almost the same, but it is very close. And again, that difference is really due to the rounding of errors and has nothing to do with, the, let's say, the model or anything else. So that is actually also nice to see in the actual circuit. So you can also do many other things to, uh, to check the circuit. You can also look at this node, what the voltage is, what is the exact same as this, of course. You can also see how much current is inflowing in this, this branch. That is, of course, this 136.4 milliamps minus how much current is flowing here. And that will be this one. All right, guys, this is for our first example about Norton's theorem. We will continue, of course, with other examples also about this topic, using more complex circuits to also illustrate the concept there. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for this interesting topic. Thank you for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.